A lot of people have cell phones going, they have radios up full blast, and the cars today are soundproof. So hearing sirens is very difficult in a vehicle. But when that happens, it really startles people. It scares people to death. They don't know which way, to, what direction to go, which way we're gonna go. And they're just really unclear of what they're supposed to do. Emergency vehicles such as ambulances, fire trucks, and police cars often have to get somewhere in a hurry. But it's not as easy as turning on the siren and flooring it. The safety of other motorists, cyclists, and pedestrians must be considered. An emergency responder certainly doesn't want to create another accident while en route to the original call. Surrounding traffic is moving at a slower pace and in every conceivable direction. Although the law clearly states that motorists must pull to the right and stop whenever an emergency vehicle approaches, that is usually not what happens. Well, it's chaos. As a matter of fact, it's stressful for the driver of the vehicles. They don't know what to do. Uh, there's a lot of confusion on their part. Uh, state law says that they're to pull to the right and stop, but they're already stopped in the intersection, so a lot of people don't know what to do. Uh, we pull behind a vehicle, we have no clue what they're doing. That's where preemption comes in. It's a simple system, one that has proven successful in alleviating congestion, allowing emergency vehicles to pass with increased safety and to log quicker response times. The way traffic preemption works is that we have a special strobe light that is on the emergency vehicle and it flashes at a specific frequency that's unique. And then we have special sensors that are on top of the traffic poles and that are connected to a card in the traffic cabinet on the side of the intersection. And these sensors sense that special strobe light that's unique from any of the other lights that might be on the emergency vehicle and send a signal down into the uh, traffic cabinet telling it that uh, an emergency vehicle is, is asking for right away on that uh, thoroughfare. And then it will turn the light green for that uh, direction where the, the uh, emergency vehicle is coming and red for all the other directions, giving it um, a green light through and then also a protected left if, if that's available, which usually it is. The detector has to have sight, line of sight, clear line of sight to the emitter that's on the emergency vehicle. And if you've got a straight, uh, clear uh, um, um, thoroughfare, uh, you can get up to 2,500 feet. So it's, it's a good distance. We like to have it that far back so that not only does the emergency vehicle have a green light when it goes to the intersection, but also any standing traffic that might have already been there has had the chance to move through the intersection so that the emergency vehicle encounters a clear intersection as well as the green light. The city of Ada now has three intersections with a preemption system installed the newly widened Main and Oak intersection, the Broadway and Richardson Loop intersection near the Pontotoc County Agriplex, and the recently rebuilt intersection of North Mississippi and Lonnie Abbott. All three are high traffic intersections used by emergency vehicles. The cities typically have uh, certain intersections that are the most troublesome. They're the most crowded, they're the most congested. They're the ones that the fire department identifies as the most dangerous for themselves as they're trying to traverse it and, and, and arrive to an emergency scene. So a lot of times uh, they'll do those intersections first. It costs approximately $6,500 to install a preemption system in an intersection. The Oklahoma Department of Transportation helped the city of Ada offset the cost on two of the three intersections. The city has plans to equip other busy intersections, particularly those along Mississippi Avenue. That is a state highway, so ODOT will once again be asked to participate. Although Ada is just discovering the benefits of preemption, it's a good time because the technology is better than ever. Optical preemption's been around since the 70s. Um, it uh, originally was a, a pretty um, um, basic system that only required a, a very basic flash rate to preempt. You only had to have eight flashes per second. Anything over that, no matter how fast it was, uh, would actually preempt. Well, we found that, you know, that there's a lot of optical noise in, a, in an intersection, so um, there's lots of, of light sources that would be faster than eight flashes a second, especially today. Now the way it works is, as it's evolved, it's, it's gotten to where um, it's a really a 14 flashes per second, it's a very tight spectrum to where uh, it's nearly impossible for an accidental preemption to occur because it's, uh, it, it's only a .05 flashes per second window, one way or the other, of the, the rate that it needs to be. Uh, and then this is the part that's actually in the traffic cabinet that's connected to the traffic controller. 
And when he's flashing that light, what you're seeing here is just uh, every time this green light comes on, it's showing that it has sensed that strobe light and is giving a call. Uh, in addition, some of the new technology that's come up available is that, that uh, we can actually encode each emitter and, and allow it to have an, a unique identity, a uh, little number that's associated with it. So in other words, each truck, each fire truck would have its own identification and that will be logged in the card, in the preemption card in the intersection so that the city can come back later and download those logs and we'll be able to tell who's gone through the intersection, uh, what preemption events have occurred, how long they lasted, what direction they occurred from, exactly, specifically, which vehicle went through the intersection. And uh, it, it's a good security measure. That way, uh, the traffic engineers here in the city can keep track of, of what's really going on at the intersections and with the preemption. So that's, that's one of the new technologies that's been really useful for cities. If you look closely at the mast arms at one of the three intersections, you'll see a small two-block receptor that sticks straight up near the signal lights. That is the device that reads the strobe signal from the emergency vehicle. Only those emergency vehicles equipped with a strobe can activate the preemption system. Here in ADA, uh, what we'll probably be doing in most applications is using a standalone emitter where it'll be a little three by seven inch uh, strobe light that will fit on top of the cab of the fire truck, uh, probably in front of the existing light bar. Now on new trucks, uh, where they'll be getting new light bars, uh, we can incorporate the, uh, we can be getting, we can have light bars that have the emitter already built into the light bar. And, and probably in the future that'll be happening as well. But for existing vehicles, we find it just, it's a little more efficient just to go ahead and use the standalone emitter. We'll put it right on top of the cab. Uh, it's just a little white strobe light, three inches by seven inches, and, and that's what we use to, uh, to give the signal. It is very important for local motorists to understand the preemption system so they can do their parts to make sure the emergency vehicles get where they need to go in a timely fashion. Drivers of emergency vehicles will use the system to clear the lane of the intersection they are about to navigate. To do this, they'll activate the strobe on top of their vehicles, which will change their light to green while turning all others to red. This should help cut down a confusion sometimes created by the presence of fast-moving emergency vehicles. And that's what we want to do. It clears that intersection, gets that congestion out of there so that we're able to get through the intersection in a safe manner. It's safe for the public for the paramedics that are driving the ambulances, and for our patients, which is the predominant reason we're there. So it's something good for citizens to be aware that the system's in town so that they'll know that, that if that happens, if they're at an intersection that's just turned green and then suddenly it's turned back to yellow and red again, that uh, that's a good warning sign that, that there could be an emergency vehicle approaching. Ultimately, more traffic preemption will lead to faster emergency response times, which will save lives. Just uh, taking one minute off the response time can mean life and death to a patient. You know, if they're not breathing for up to a minute, that's brain cells that are lost and, and we can save a lot more people if we can get there faster. And uh, getting through the traffic, if it saves us uh, a minute of time, well that's well worth the, uh, the cost of preemption.